Back to my panel here in New York with Megyn Kelly and the Judge Anna Napolitano. And this, this thing could get tricky here because we're now hearing about the vote on the Medicaid expansion provision. Right. That was item number four that the justices said they would address. The vote was 7-2 to strike it down mm -hmm. on, on the Medicaid expansion as it was written in the law. The dissenters were Justices Breyer and Justice Kagan. This went down overwhelmingly. Right. What do you read into that? that this one was more clear to them than the other ones. This was one that they could easily get behind. I mean, there, there is a question about how much threatening the federal government can do of the states. And, you know, the, the states had gone into the high court and said, you can't do this. Medicaid has become a part of our states and our budgets for decades now. And now you're telling us if we don't comply with this law, we lose everything. We have to kick all the poor people off of the Medicaid rolls just because we've been bad by not complying with the new health care law. You can't do that to us. And these justices said, you know what, that's right. They, they went too far. The feds, the Congress went too far in trying to manipulate the states in that way. They said, you, you can say, you know, you're not going to get the new money for Obamacare if you don't comply with this Medicaid expansion. But you can't take away the existing funding for Medicaid that these states have been relying on just, for all these years. Just to emphasize that a little more, this is from the ruling now, and I'm reading, the states claim that this threat, meaning the threat of Medicaid expansion, serves no purpose other than the force unwilling states, of which there are many, perhaps a couple dozen if not more, then the force unwilling states to sign up for the dramatic expansion of health care coverage affected by the act. Given the nature of the threat and the programs at issue here, we must agree. The hope. threat is the threat to take back from the states other dollars that the federal government is committed to pay the states to compensate the federal government for setting up the exchanges on its own. So basically this act, which has been, this portion has been invalidated, said to the states, set up these insurance exchanges. They're basically for poor people or for people that are out of work, people who can't get insurance anywhere else. If you don't set it up, we will set it up for you and then we will deduct from what we owe you on other matters what it costs to set it up. That has been invalidated. The ability of the federal government to command the states to do something that they don't want to do and to punish them financially if they don't comply with the command, that's been invalidated by a vote of seven to two. Remember, more than half the states challenged this in the Supreme Court. They alone of the challengers were victorious. And just to emphasize this, Republican governors across the country um, have suggested that they are not going forward with setting up the exchanges. Nineteen they of them. They're dragging their feet right now but they, on but, this. But I'm not sure, listen, this is, we're, we're still trying to figure it out, so respectfully to the viewers, we're still trying to figure it out, but I am not sure if the state exchanges, I think they still need to set up the state exchanges. It's the Medicaid expansion, because there were a couple things the law did. It said, for the very poor, we're going to expand it. Medicaid covers this number, now it's going to cover this number. And the Supreme Court's now cast that into doubt. But then they also said, for those of you who are not very poor or just above very poor, if you're sort of middle class and you don't have health insurance, we're going to cover you too. And we're going to make all the states set up state insurance exchanges so that you can go out on the, on the market and you can buy individual insurance. And if the insurance policy costs $15,000, we're going to supplement it. We're going to pay 10 grand. So you, for a family of four, only have to pay five grand. And, and when we say we are going to supplement it, we mean the federal taxpayer. All right, so we're going to supplement it so you can buy. I think that piece of the law stands. I think these states still need to set up their state exchanges, the 19 Republican states, Republican governors. Um, they now need to scramble to set up those exchanges. It's the medic, it's that other provision about the Medicaid expansion. So those sort of just above extremely poor Correct. folks, I don't know what's going to happen. In uh, it's a good point to clarify, and we're going to work through this too. It's also the intent of the law that if your employer didn't offer you service, you could run to that exchange and get coverage. So where are you going to go and, if the exchange doesn't well, exist? The, 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 um, correct. And that is, that is the question that we face at the moment.